Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey, everyone. My name is Sarah McCarthy, and I am so excited that you are joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.5.DP.1.2, and it says to interpret numerical data. That means data with numbers with whole number values. I was kind of surprised to see this because in fifth grade we do a lot of work with fractions and decimals, but then I was like, oh, we're going to determine the mean. That makes sense that it's whole number. So um, with whole number values represented with tables or line plots by determining the mean, that means the average, the mode, the median, and the range. All right. Here's an example. It says that rain was collected and measured daily to the nearest inch for the past week. The recorded amounts are one, zero, three, one, zero, zero, and one. So the range is three because when we subtract three, the greatest number minus zero, the least amount we get three inches. The modes, there's two of them, zero and one, because we have three zeros and three ones. So we have two modes here. Those are the values that are that occur the most often. The mean value can be determined by adding up all the amounts. So one plus zero plus three plus one plus zero plus zero plus one. Then you divide all that by seven. How did we get seven? Well, that's how many numbers were given to us. One, zero, three, one, zero, zero, one. Seven different values. So you add up all the totals and divide it by the number of data points that you have, which would be equivalent or equal to six sevenths of an inch when you add it up. So the mean would be the same if it rained six sevenths of an inch each day. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I have created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education thankfully releases to the public. And in these breaking down the best episodes, I'm just showing you my thought process, how I break apart and analyze the standards. And then in the second half of the video, we'll pop over to the website, mccarthymathacademy.com and take a look at resources that are strategically aligned to this particular standard okay so we'll get there in a minute let's keep going some benchmark clarifications it says that instruction includes interpreting the mean in real-world problems as leveling out finding the average it's a middle point but it's like leveling out or a balance point or an equal share some related benchmarks to this one would be 5.fr.1.1 which is division as fractions and then 5.ar.1.1 is our multi-step real world problems standard, which is a pretty heavy standard too. Some terms that you need to know. We got line plot, which looks kind of like this over here. The mean is the average. The median is the middle, the exact middle or the average of the two middles that you find. The mode, the mode is the value or values that appear the most often and the range is when we find the greatest value minus the least value and we subtract that to find the range. All right, vertical alignment, where are they coming from? Well, in fourth grade, we've got 4.dp.1.2, which targets the mode, median, and range in a data set. And then in sixth grade, we have 1.2 and 1.6, where we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the mean and the median. So they definitely need some practice with these. For the purpose and instructional strategy section, let's see what jumped out at me. It says that the purpose of this benchmark is to interpret numerical data by using the mean, mode, median, and range. 
When finding the median and mode, it is important for students to organize their data by putting it in order from least to greatest. I put a star here because this is huge. It's very important that it's put into order from least to greatest. And when it's found on a line plot, it kind of already is in order from least to greatest, which is helpful. With the data organized, students can determine the range by subtracting the least value from the greatest value. The mode by finding the value that occurs the most. Just keep in mind that there could be one mode, no modes because nothing appears the most often or even two or more modes. If you have two different data points appearing the same number of times then you would have two modes or more than that. For the median, that's the middle number. So we're finding the value in the middle of the set. And for the mean, that's finding the average of the set. Now onto some common misconceptions and errors. It says that students may confuse the mean and the median of a data set. Honestly, they might confuse all of them. <laughs> but usually I remember in school too that the mean and the median would I'd be like, which one is which? So as teachers, our way to combat that misconception is to make sure that we provide examples where the median and mean of the data are not close in value and to it's just a lot of practice practice, 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 giving them ways to help them remember. For me, I remembered that median kind of looked like it had middle there and that the mean was kind of the tough one to do, right? With me, finding the average is the most complicated one in my opinion. So for instructional tasks, we've got this. You can go ahead and take a look at this to see what it looks like in action. Um, we've got a data table right here, finding the mean, the median, and the mode. And I thought this was an interesting question. If you were Bobby, which of these results would you report to your friend? So I thought this was interesting. Obviously there is no right or wrong answer there. Um, but I think what they're trying to do is say, to get the students to realize that I would wanna say that out of, you know, that the amount that I, that my mode 17 was also my fastest time. And I did my fastest time three different times. So I'm trying to beat that, okay? And then for this one, I just, <laughs> oh, I was like, why did I say wow? I said, wow, because this is a pie eating contest, y'all. And somebody, according to this county fair pie contest, ate eight pies. I, I can't, I don't know if I can even eat one pie. Eight pies is a lot. Whew. Anyway, I just was, it's kind of funny to read these problems sometimes. It'd be like, wow, eight pies. Hmm. So you can see that in this, they're determining again, the mean, the mode, the median, and the range. That is the name of the game with this standard. So let's go ahead and go over to the website to see what you have access to with your taking on the best membership. All right, so here we are at McCarthyMathAcademy.com. We're gonna click members enter here, select taking on the best, and then we want fifth grade. So we will scroll down to data analysis and probability, the DP strand. And we want this one right here, ma.5.dp.1.2, the mode, range, median, and mean in a data set. When we click that, the first page that opens up is your bronze page. It's your bronze level of resources. The bronze level includes the video lessons and the printable student guides that go along with the lessons. So we have one, two video lessons finding the mode, median, range, and mean in a table, and finding the mean, mode, range, and median of a line plot. So with these two lessons, students can click play and I'll go over everything. So even if you, if you're like, I don't even remember how to find the mode or find the median or find the range, go ahead and watch these video lessons so you can get familiar and feel confident as you are rolling out your lessons this time. Um, and then the whole goal of these video lessons is to make math fun and to make it click for your students. The expectation should not be that they have mastered the content after just watching a video lesson, right? They actually need to practice to achieve that mastery, which is why we have the silver plan. So when we click on the silver plan, we can go scroll right, right down to where it says silver resources, click here for your printables and those will load. And then you'll notice right away, we've got the video lesson for the bronze page right there because it goes video lesson and then extra practice that follows that video lesson, extra practice, video lesson, extra practice if we had a bunch of video lessons. Here it says, Laura tracks her scores on all of her math tests this year. The data she collects is shown below. Determine the mode, median, range, and mean of Lauren's data. So in the video lessons, we're showing how we take this information off of the table, put it in order from least to greatest. Use that to find the mode, to find the median, 
finding the range, and finding the mean. The expectation is that students record the notes onto the paper as we work it out. And then after they watch the video, they can try the extra practice, which looks very similar. Now we have Isabel's science test scores. Same kind of thing. Take it off, answer the questions. The next video lesson is with the line plots. So we're looking at our line plot and determining the mode, the median, the range, and the mean in this video lesson. The one that follows is the extra practice looking very similar to what we just did, just a different scenario, different line plot, same kind of questions. Then we have the math mission right here. Um, this says to roll two number cubes and record the sum on the chart to the left. Do this 15 times then create a line plot based on the data. Finally, determine the mode, range, median, and mean. So if you roll a one and you roll a two, you would add those up and get three. And you would, and then your students would go ahead and put these their sums into this table, use the information from the table to create a line plot, and then find the mode, the median, the range, and the mean of the data that they collected. So this is nailing the standard right there. And again, notice that all of these are whole numbers. We don't have any fractions, no decimals here. That's what the standard was saying. Now the final activity for the silver plan is math misconception mystery. You can see that it has the video lesson icon. It's not really a lesson, but it's a, <laughs> a, a mystery video. So all you got to do is click play right there and I will guide your students through the entire process. First I'll say okay go ahead and solve this problem on your own or with a small group. It says determine the mode, median, range, and mean for the set of data below. So here's our data. You have to determine all of it. Well they do. Once they have their answer they click play and they will watch as four other characters solve that same problem. Three of the characters are going to make a mistake that students commonly make and only one character will solve the problem correctly. So students will need to watch closely, analyze, justify, decide who is correct and why, and then they'll fill out their detective report. By the way, the characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents, having fun. And once you start these math misconception mystery videos, your students are going to beg you for more. So just be prepared there. Here's where they can state who the most reasonable answer belongs to and evaluating the work of the other three, where their error was, what they did correctly, and all of that. All of the printables that we just went over, there's an answer key right there. So if you are like, what do I do? There's an answer key right there to guide you. And then if you are a gold plan member, you can click here because you have access to everything we've gone over. Plus you also have access to a mini assessment for every standard. You can see the standards right up here. It says show what you know, so you can use this as a mini assessment or you can just use it as extra practice, whatever you wanna do. But you can see there's a variety of question types. We got this one talking about the range, the median here. Here we've got a line plot. <laughs> JC, I actually was listening to NSYNC while I was creating this test. And anyway, <laughs> what was I saying? Okay, so this one is talking about the range, the mode, and the median. It's a select all, so you gotta find which statements are true there. And then here, this one says, well, you can read it, but um, this one is saying, how would, if we, if, he add, if we add a new data point, how would it affect the mean there? So mini assessment there. You got your answer key right there. Um, you also have access to these breaking down the best videos right here, ad free, just clicks away from all the resources that we're going over, just a click or two. These episodes are also available on YouTube, just YouTube contains ads. So it's a nice perk of being a gold member is to have these videos ad free. But really the biggest highlight of the gold plan is access to McCarthy Math 155. This is a daily math intervention that I created let me go back. Um, a daily math intervention that is aligned to the Common Core standards. I know it says Common Core, and I know that we are now taking on the best standards, right? However, there are so many videos in here that can still help. If you've had the time to explore both the Common Core and you're pretty familiar with the best standards, you know that there's a lot of skills that are similar. So there's a lot that can help you here. The 155 stands for 155 video lessons. 
we're going to click on fifth grade. It's for each grade, 155 video lessons. Now, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that there is nothing here with the mode, the median, the range, and the mean in McCarthy Math 155. You're not going to find that practice here. However, let's say that you have students struggling with multiplication or division. Maybe they're able to add up the totals with the mean, but they've forgotten how to divide. Guess what? You can go ahead and go to this division unit and have them practice. There's 10 video lessons right there. Maybe they're having some, maybe they need some more practice with um, numerical expressions like the order of operations. 13 video lessons there. Uh, place value, operations with decimals. So adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing with decimals. Just be careful that you know your standards. Um, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions. There are line plot questions right there. So if your students are struggling with just reading a line plot, you can click on that unit and hopefully find something in there that works for you. But yeah, line, a coordinate plane even. I mean, that doesn't really relate with this particular standard, but yeah, so there's a lot there to pull from with McCarthy Math 155. So that that is it. All right. So I hope that this episode of Breaking Down the Best has helped you to better understand this standard for today, that now you understand what the expectation is for your students to be able to do, and you know what resources you have that are strategically aligned to this standard. Before we go, let me remind you that what you wake up and you do every day with your life, it really does matter. Thank you for stepping into the best version of yourself on a daily basis to inspire your students to do the same. And of course, thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me into your educational space. I love being able to support you and your students and hopefully put some time back into your pocket so you can enjoy your nights and weekends like you should. Speaking of time, I know that you're busy, so I'm going to let you go. But I hope that I get to see you on another Breaking Down the Best episode real soon. All right? Bye! Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best of my ability. All right, for real now. Bye!